Okay, so you're, you're working on that, and I guess you'll, you'll, you'll update us how you're getting on with it, kind of extending the life of mine that way. But you, you've kind of, kind of shortcutted a process in a way with regards to the acquisition of Blue Spec. Now, that's a high-grade uh, project. So why? It doesn't seem to fit in with what you've got at the moment. So as part of our project, we've got a big conventional CIL plant um, free milling produces gold bars at sort of 2, two to 2.4 million tonne per annum. But on the side of it, we've got a little 100,000 tonne per annum flotation plant for these little high-grade refractory deposits, of which we've got one. Um, and we were originally going to just fire that plant up for a year, produce a, a concentrate for sale from one of these six-gram ore bodies we've got nearby and shut it down. Blue Spec um, reacts very well to flotation as well, uh, it's got stibnite in it, antimony, so we can produce an antimony gold con, very high grade. We basically get paid 100% of the gold value the antimony pays for that smelting, um, and we can utilise that infrastructure for another five, six, seven years. Um, so we're not displacing ore, we're just using our infrastructure to its, its maximum. Okay, and what's that going to do for the bottom line? Well, if you... You know, looked at 40,000 ounces per annum, for instance, and you used a, you know, similar all-in sustaining cost. It should be less, but let's use a similar. You know, that's 60, 70 million Aussie a year. Let's call it 50 million US a year extra cash flow without any any extra capex bar the start of the underground at, at Blue Spec. But I mean, dollar terms, what was, what was it going to do for you, do you think? And what are you going to do with the cash that uh, well, you generate yeah. from it? You know, because you know you you've gone and bought that. Is there other land acquisition that you've got in mind? Is it going to pay off your debt quicker? I mean, how, how do you? Why, oh, why gosh, have you why have you I made the acquisition basically? Well, we made the acquisition because it's hugely value accretive. End of story. Increase out production, increase cash flow, uh, pays for itself in a few months once it's in production. So that's why we've done it. What we do with that cash, well, that seems quite a way away. We've got to build it, make it, and then we can determine. But, you know, certainly as a large shareholder, I'd be pretty excited about dividends myself. But the market hasn't reacted. It doesn't seem to have given you any credit for it. You, you think it's better than the market does. Why is that? Uh, I think we will be putting out an updated resource and scoping study in the coming quarter. And I think once those metrics are out, let's, let's have this conversation again and see what the market thinks. Good, good. I hope they do. Um, what about other land packages? So it's, do you, do you th are there are there more things around there which yeah. you think you could take advantage of? Oh, absolutely! Once we've got a mill there, you know we become the dominant player in the East Pilbara. So fantastic position to be in. We can leverage off it. You know, in the short term, I, I think we've got enough on our hands. We've got lots of exploration to do on our current tenement package. You know, if an opportunistic acquisition comes up, we'll always look at it. Um, but I think our focus really now is building, producing gold, producing money showing what all these things bring together and at the same time doing exploration to show extra mine life. Okay. So look, if I look at share price, obviously double since we spoke in April, great news. I mean, shut up. Um, but you talk about potential for re-rate. You don't think it's fully valued yet. So what are the things that you're going to have to deliver to get new people looking at this interested? Because you know, right now I think, oh, crikey, I've missed the boat. These guys have, these guys have uh, seen a huge jump in there value, uh, I better look elsewhere. Why, why shouldn't they? Uh, on any metric, we are undervalued. Have a look at the analyst reports on our website. Uh, on an EV per ounce, uh, EV per free cash flow versus any producer, as we take that step into production, um, you know there are multiples still to be had uh, on our share price. And I think once we show that funding in particular in the coming quarter, you know I think that's one of the, the key uh, items to release that handbrake. Right. Okay. I think I always, I always take analyst covers with a pinch of salt because you, know, you guys are paying them to write nice things about you. And that's the way it works, right? So yeah, we don't pay them. We don't pay them for the coverage down here. No, no, not allowed to. Not allowed to. But they, but they, they have a job to do. They sell you. They sell you to their clients. So, um, I mean, genuinely, if you look, like I say, I, I want a kind of real. Com I had a real conversation with you last time. You're an honest guy. Um, with regards to you know what's coming up over the next six months, there's there's a lot to deliver. I know you've achieved a lot in the last you know few months, but there's a lot to deliver. Um, what is genuinely the moment that people should be looking for? Is it the you know first shovel in the ground with regards to the, the, the plant? Because you talk about constructions underway, but 
What are the big moments that really make a difference when you're building a mine? Look, we've, we've looked at quite a few uh, other companies that have been going through development recently and trying to work out what was the catalyst that, that released the handbrake for them. And they're never the same, and they tend to be a slow release as you move towards production. But certainly getting the funding in place is important. Finalising the permits is important. Um, and just building is important. You know, as you get closer and closer to gold, the market becomes more and more excited. So it really is just uh, a gentle progression from here, I think. Right. And do you think, you know, could we, again, we talked last time about being a single asset. I mean, you made this kind of small acquisition of Blue Spec. Um, do you think you're going to need to do more to kind of get, you know, move, move up the food chain, as it were? So, uh, you know, a stat we quite often talk about is a single asset company, which even with Blue Spec, we're still a single asset. It's really one plant. Um, trades are generally multiples of around three times EBITDA, market cap EBITDA is threefold. Multiple assets trade at around five times. So you can get a lot more value by building into a multi-asset company. Uh, and why wouldn't you do that? You know, don't become emotionally attached to these things. You know, so we'll, we'll certainly look at that. But I think we need to add value by getting into production. And once you're in production, it's a lot easier to look at those scenarios. 